Thank you for coming here on this. Uh, uh, thankfully, there was no traffic today, so I can't even. Uh, you know, it's it's good that we're not. We didn't have to rush it and um, worry about that. So um, a lot of people ask me about uh, this whole travel blogging phenomenon. How did you get into this, and how did you? Uh, you know, how, what was your journey like? Um, and if you ask me, it's it's actually not so much of travel first. It was blogging first. How many of you know about this website called Zanga? Zanga.com. I'm not surprised because this was way back in 2003, and uh, that's when I started my blogging journey, so to say. And it was, uh, it was. If I look at my blog posts from back then, they are really, really embarrassing. When you read them, you're like, I wrote that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's how the journey uh, began. Um, can you? Then I, uh, from Zanga, I moved the blog to uh, Blogger. So then I started with, uh, then I started with, uh, calling the blog Chronicles. Gotten me here, right? It says, so little surprise that I yearned to travel to all the continents and all the beautiful and exotic places on the planet. Very childish kind of lingo, but it's, it's still, so the, the seeds of this whole journey or the seeds of what I'm doing today have been sown back then. Uh, and in the end it says big on dreams, I hate compromising on them, on quality, on simple pleasures and sunlight. And I, I didn't realize that this is what I had written back then. But today uh, with my blog, I say the tagline which I use is exotic ringo, travel exotic, live simple. Somehow it's all just, you know. Uh, so like pretty much. You know, looking back again, that that was such a such an awesome journey. Your, your first trip is always something which is special to you. Right? So you have so much to talk about, and so that was that was again the kind of content which I wanted to share with people. I look at it as content today. I look at it as stories today. But at that time, it was just so much to tell. People. It's a little difficult to do this while I'm telling you, but please bear. Yeah, I don't have a quick um, Again, the same kind of seeds which are germinating now. Um, at that time, I had not traveled anywhere except for Goa. That was the only thing which I had done. 2007 is when I had still done only Goa. And then I, then I talk about the aspirations which I have, starting with Bhutan in March, and then hopefully a Euro trip or Maldives, two months of uh, Doing a documentary in Ladakh, which never happened. I've still not gone to Ladakh. Um, so yeah, you know, so so blogging and travel has kind of gone hand in hand for me. It's been uh, it's been it's been a journey which has been both together. It's not been outside of India, solo foreign trip, so to say. This wasn't solo really, uh, but it started solo, and then I was joined in, uh, or rather, I joined a group. Um, uh, one. We, we saw stuff like this, which is, this is the Takin. The Takin is the national animal of Bhutan. And we actually uh, experienced the Takin given birth. That was so, you know, these are the kind of stories which you can't just tell a few people and uh, say that, you know, this is so awesome. You want to tell the whole world. Again, Bhutan. Uh, then this was again followed by, uh, more trips to Goa. So in 2007, I did two trips to Goa in the beginning of the year, then there was Bhutan, and then at the end of the year, there were two more trips to Goa. So, uh, and the original plan was Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, and Ecuador. I'll come to what eventually happened. So uh, this epic South America trip was, it looked something like this. This this was uh, this is my friend Karina. She's the one who um, who 
implanted this thought in my head saying that you've been le leading a really boring life um, and you need to get out and travel more uh, because you owe it to yourself. Uh, why owe it to yourself? Is because I had kind of taken on family responsibilities a little early on with my father's business having crashed in the 99-2000 uh, time frame and uh, she kind of knew that kind of background and since we've been good friends she kind of urged me to take this up and say do something epic with your life so I, I, I'll never be done thanking this friend of mine this is uh, Valle de Cocora this is a uh, so these are I think 50 plus feet palm trees in uh, in an area called Salento, near Salento, called Valle de Cocora, in Colombia. This was the view from my hostel, where I stayed for a whole month. And um, this is uh, this is Rio de Janeiro. And the interesting part about this view is that, firstly, I didn't have to even get up from my bed. This was the view which I would have while I was sleeping in my bed. Uh, you raise your head and you get this view. But the most interesting part about this was, for a whole month in this hotel, four people in this really huge, perhaps this big a room, uh, four out of ten beds, beds were taken, and um, I paid less than ten p, ten thousand rupees for this. So when when people, really beautiful uh, friend of mine who uh, who is the sub editor of Nat Geo Traveler, she's currently there right now. This is. Um, this is the Parque das Aves in the southwest of Brazil, which is um, near the Foz do Iguazu. And this is the kind of stuff, this is the kind of dangerous life which you have in South America. Really, really dangerous. So, eventually, uh, this picture I'm just going to hold on to, just to tell you that I, that, remember I said 40 days of uh, trip, which was, uh, which was supposed to be Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia and Brazil. Eventually, that went from 40 days to three months, uh, and then from three months to five and a half months. And I was staying there so long that my best friend, who used to live in uh, Boston at that time, said, well, "What are you doing? Uh, are you planning to settle down there? I'm going to come and see you there." He was at that time he was dating a Brazilian girl, and uh, so he was like, "You know what? Let me just come down and meet you there." So I said, hey, that'd be great, that'd be perfect because you guys can meet, I get to meet you, it will be awesome. So he came down there, it almost became like a reunion on the other side of the planet. I hadn't seen him for, I think, six years. That this epic South America trip almost didn't happen uh, because of a lot of reasons. First one being finances. That's, that's what yeah, the people still ask me. And uh, even today, in October, I'm now planning to go to the Philippines, and I have no idea how I'm going to do that because finances is still constrained. Uh, but what I have realized looking back at my travels is, in spite of those kind of worries, I've still managed to make those things happen. So, these are things I'm trying to tell you that we all have these kind of fears, but the moment we decide on doing something, it's, it starts becoming more and more possible. And it taught me the art of travel. How? Uh, today is August 28, 2016 and Facebook popped up this message saying 8 years ago you said this. Guess what it is. So uh, this was when I was in Brazil and I was, uh, sorry this was when I was in Ecuador and I was, I was slated to go back to Brazil and uh, instead of that I wasted that ticket and chose to go to Colombia. That's the 40 days turning into 3 months. So this was again a very interesting epiphany that happened today. Uh, that it happened to so this this slide I actually put in today. I didn't know this that this these dates coincided so beautifully. It could be youtubecom slash name if you are into vlogging, or then it could be your brand name, your blog.com. Ideally, you want everything to kind of culminate into your parent brand. That's the most ideal scenario. Blogging engines, you have WordPress or Ghost. Ghost is again something which is, uh, how much time do I have? Uh, Almost done? Yeah, volume. Okay. Uh, so you have two primary options of, uh, sorry, I didn't check with you guys earlier about my, you know, am I audible or not? Is everything okay? Just last Okay. 
So WordPress and Ghost are the two primary blogging engines which you have access to. 99% of people use WordPress. Don't get confused between WordPress.com and WordPress the engine. WordPress engine can be used on any of your websites. You can host it yourself. Whereas WordPress.com is where you can host something for free, which is which can be your name dot WordPress.com. So they are two different things: the service and the hosting platform. Now coming to scheduling, how do people do their blog posts? Right. So some people can be very very systematic and planned about their approach. You can go with a content calendar. You can go with drafts. I use I use drafts. What I do is I create the header of my post. I write a little something, the first paragraph, and I keep it in my drafts. So I don't forget I have to write on this. Somebody could do a content calendar where you write everything either digitally or on a piece of paper, saying I want to do these blog posts on so and so date, and you stick to it. Or you could use a tool like a buffer or you know anything else that you have. Yeah, almost done. I can last two slides. Updates. This is very important because a lot of times you can you have created a post five years ago. Your information will be redundant in that time. So you want to go back to your blog post and go and change it, edit it. Nobody's gonna say why you edit it. You have to edit it because you want to make the information more and more relevant. Yeah. For promotions, you can do all of these kind of things. Do guest posts with others. So if I'm doing a post on say Chetan's blog, he's doing one of mine. We are kind of co-promoting each other. Social media, of course, speaking like this. Uh, listicles, listicles is uh, you know bloggers to follow in India, that kind of stuff. Reposting, reposting is when you have. So today, when the Olympics are happening this month, I have actually started promoting more of my Brazil posts. Why? Because it's more relevant. So you want to stay relevant to the times and what will appeal to people. Uh, Reposting, then backrubs. Backrubs is basically I post about you, you post about me. You know, so those kind of things. And then advertising. Monetization. These are your current methods, which I am aware of, but there could be more. We should discuss this. Advertising, paid blog, blog, blog posts, subscriptions is my favorite. That's your utopia. If you can get, if you can create a blog where people are paying you per month because your content is so good, I think you've arrived. Donations and crowdfunding, and then eBooks and digital products. So you could probably create, a, you know, so I could probably write a, a eBook about travel blogging for startups, you know, and then sell that for say 50 rupees, 100 rupees online, and then you do probably, you know, uh, just start earning um, royalties on that. Focusing on Goa, which is going to relaunch, it's currently down, and the other one is exotic.